So we did get a, a bunch of actual EV commercials mm -hmm. that we want to talk about. So you want to start with the Kia? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we don't have to one. talk through all of them. I have them all written down in case we want to reference it. But I, I thought the Kia one was one of my favorites. That, and that was my favorite. In my group of people watching, the Kia one got some of the most talk as well. Funnily enough, because someone, a bunch of people were like, "That's the new Hyundai." I was like, "It's not," but you're also right yeah. because it's built on the same base, same um, platform. But did do, do you want to talk about the? The robot dog and the... Yeah, it was basically like there's this world of real dogs and then robot dogs and the robot dogs feel left out, but they really want to connect with humans. And so it sees this uh, this Kia EV6 on the street and it's mm -hmm. like, wow, I really connect with that. And so this adorable robot dog goes on a quest to connect with the robot car and eventually it jumps into the sunroof and then the battery mm -hmm. dies. It's a, it's a whole yeah, adventure. Yeah, for whatever reason, it deems the best way to connect with the EV6 is to jump from the roof of a building in the city. Yeah. Classic. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, it its battery dies. And then here's a question I actually have about this. So the battery dies, it lands on the floor, and then the guy plugs it into the charging port on his car mm -hmm. and charges it at lightning speeds, by the way. Warp charging can like take a step back to what the charging speeds on that dog was. Yeah. Um, and it charges. Do they have some sort of like the F-150 like backwards reverse charging See, in it? I'm I guessing that, no, but. When I saw that, I thought he unplugged the car and plugged in the dog no, with the same thing. He very specifically plugs back into the car and then there's like a USB-A cable going into the, which is also like <laughs> robot dog 2022 USB-A. USB are on. you kidding me? Come but, on. Um, okay. So I didn't know. Uh, right. Yeah. I don't, I'm we're not looking aware way of, too deep in this. I'm not aware of that being a real feature that is shipping. I would love if that's how they announced it. <laughs> we will have reverse charging mm -hmm. from the Kia EV6. For all now your you know robot it, dogs. But not for other cars, just for robot pets. Just for robot pets. That would um, be solid. No, I like that commercial a lot. I did. I also think the EV6 looks really nice. I really, really dig sharp. it. Sharp. It's really sharp. It's, sharp. It is the Ionic 5, but like the sharper, sportier version, I feel like, and I like yeah. it a lot. And uh, there was an Ionic 5 commercial also from Hyundai, uh, a caveman commercial with Jason Bateman, kind of like the evolution of humankind, and then kind of talked about the evolution of EVs and how they used to not be very good. And mm -hmm. how they are getting better. Um, yeah. I thought it was funny. I thought it was cute. It's always funny how they try to, everyone has to frame it a certain way. Yeah. Like you can advertise a product, but the Super Bowl is really about making a statement about your product and how it relates to others. You're telling a story more than anything. Yeah. So I saw lots of like really overproduced commercials for simple things like Salesforce or like random simple uh, yeah, single use I... things even. Um, so for electric cars, it's always like, you're not just telling the story of like, here's a new product. It's um, this is the future of our cars or this is like some futuristic high tech thing. They mm -hmm. always try to loop in some little bit of that. It's funny because since Tesla has basically no marketing and like they've been doing this for a long time and we're just seeing legacy manufacturers kind of taking this jump. This is all the stuff we would have seen if Tesla had a marketing budget and wanted to do cutesy commercials for the mainstream. like. Mm. They're kind of, this is the first time we're seeing how legacy and just mainstream marketing of EVs is kind of not because Tesla never did any of that. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of cool. Like we got to see a bunch of that. Yeah. It's a, I, I wonder what a Tesla Super Bowl ad would look like. Like I've seen Tesla videos, Tesla intros to their events, Tesla production. I've seen it. I wonder if they made a Super Bowl ad, what, what that would look like. That'd be uh, interesting. I think they would call us because we won their Love Day commercial. That's, that's a valid point. Mm -hmm. That's a valid point. They yeah. could. Um, one of my favorites was the Polestar commercial. Yes. This was earlier in the night. Uh, it was mm -hmm. in the first half sometime. I remember watching it and thinking, oh, that's a sharp looking. They picked the Polestar 2 in Ooh, white. Holy. Black and white. A nice looking vehicle. Mm -hmm. And and the, the commercial itself was very, it was just like a series of statements. We're not this. Mm -hmm. We're not this. We're not this. And some of those statements were- A couple jabs. Were, were very directed. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, what do we, did we write them down? No there was one diesel about- No Dieselgate. No Dieselgate. I wonder what they're referring to yeah, there. Yeah, it's almost impossible to tell. Yeah. Um, and No Conquering Mars. No Conquering Mars, which I guess is more of along the lines of like, we're not distracted by other things. I think it's like very specifically like our CEO is not distracted yeah. for other things, which I know nothing about Volvo's yeah. CEO. Like but, Conquering Mars sounds kind of dope, but I guess if you're like, we're not Conquering Mars, you're like, if you're, we're- we're not distracted by I that. I think it's safe to say if I'm going to buy a car, I don't give a damn about if yeah. the people making it are conquering Mars or not. So. Yeah. But um, it was it was specifically for the Polestar 2, which to me is, it says a couple things. One, all right, they're actually trying to sell this car yeah. big time. Cool. Um, and two, 
uh, I don't know. What do you think? Did they did they make a meaningful case for like considering the Polestar as a car to buy, or was that more of a statement about Polestars in general? I think what is they know that they're. I mean, so we kind of talked about which type of EV companies would be going on at the Super Bowl. We were wondering if we would see Rivian or um, like Lucid, which we didn't. Cars, companies that people don't know. And while Polestar is still under Volvo, Polestar is not a household name right now. So I think that commercial could have been whatever it was. If you see that really nice white Polestar at the end and see the the car company Polestar, people are going to be like, what is this? And be intrigued. And that's what they did. It worked perfectly. Yeah. That's the kind of commercial where I think people just Googled Polestar. Probably. And not specifically the Polestar 2. Yeah, I would not doubt if all of these uh, different car companies during the Super Bowl if Polestar was the most searched after. Of the EVs? Yeah, because it's a company no one knows about. Or company most people, less people know about, yeah. Yeah, I guess that was my initial suspicion when I was considering like what counts as an EV commercial. If you are just going to generically say, like I think we'll get to this in a second. Actually, let's just do it now, the GM commercial. Yes. The GM commercial wasn't about look at this one specific product that's so sick that it changes the trajectory of our company. No. It was, uh, I think they ended with a statement that just said 30 new EVs by 2030. Did it say that? I think that was the text that was on the GM screen. GM was kind end. of weird because they were also one of the specific sponsors of the Super Bowl. So they yeah. kind of had little pieces. They actually had two commercial, full blown commercials okay. and then also their like little transitions. Yeah. But um, that, I did see one that had that statement you're talking at about the, the end. Was it the Doctor, the Austin Powers one? Uh, it had a bunch of people in it. Yeah. 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 The Austin Powers one was like um, a. I don't know if I'm showing my age, but Austin Powers was a really funny movie when I was a bit younger. I loved them. So it like brought back the cast of that and kind of Dr. Evil is like this villain. So basically right. in, in the commercial is like pollution and everything is the real number one villain of the world. So in order for Dr. Evil to be the number one villain, he has to eliminate pollution so then he can be the evil. So he has to save the world to destroy the world. Got it. Um, And that's kind of, and then he hops in a Hummer at the end. Yeah. Um, which also had a really funny, like, really low angle of him in the Hummer. And it's like, that's how I actually feel when the Hummer is, yeah. like, around. Yeah, I think that's how we all feel about the Hummer. Standing yeah. next to that thing. Yeah. Um, and funny enough, the other ad was for the Silverado EV, which was specifically one model. Yes. Um, I know it was a Sopranos tie-in, which I don't watch it. I don't think you do either. But funny enough, it was just it driving around, like, places right outside yeah. the studio. That one was really funny because I I remember when we shot the Rivian video, we drove around like the studio around yeah. New Jersey and we're I'm like testing the car and all this stuff. That Silverado commercial to me was not a Sopranos reference because I've never seen the Sopranos, sorry, yeah. but they drove around our studio. <laughs> all the street signs and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I drove the Rivian on that same yeah, road. That's my commute in yeah, the morning. Yeah, that's my commute. That's crazy. So yeah, that, that was sort of like hitting close to home. But it was specifically for the Silverado EV pickup truck. That that was what that commercial yeah. was for. I also thought the truck looked better in that video than some of the press images we've it was seen. Was blue one? Maybe right? yeah. Maybe just actually seeing it driving around. Yeah, um, it looked yeah. nice. Seeing it move, seeing it roll. Um, I think also then the first one of the night for me was uh, the BMW iX. Yeah, with and this is another Arnold. funny one. Yeah, it, it had some sort of lightning puns about zapping everything I, with lightning. Yeah, it's I don't know. I didn't get the part where he's so mad that he's like charging everything, but then he's happy that he gets an electric car that needs to be charged. So to me, it felt like this was just more work for Arnold (laughs) Zeus. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I know Hayata is going to disagree with me on this one, but I kind of liked what it looked like despite the giant the nostril pig pig nostrils on the. Do you like it despite the nostril, or do you like it with the nostril? I would like it more without the nostrils, but I still do like it with the nostrils. Interesting. So that was yeah. that was specifically a commercial for the I'm getting BMW a nod. iX. I'm getting a nod of agreement. Yeah, okay. it's uh, it was good. It, I think that was also one that probably would have some people searching for it after they saw the commercial. Yeah, because it had a big like road presence in the video. You saw it moving and rolling. You're probably interested in a new BMW. What is that new electric car? So mm-hmm. that, that I think they they did a pretty solid job in that commercial of getting that curiosity. It was going. it was the cutesy Super Bowl as commercial enough yeah. to kind of catch your interest for a second and then a new car from BMW is always um, interesting. Now, there was another one that to me felt like the EV aspect was two second uh, like pushed on the back burner for it because 
I, I looked at multiple blogs to to write this episode today just to make sure I could watch all the commercials, mm -hmm. and almost none of them included Nissan as having an EV ad. Right, you the it. Nissan one, yeah. Yeah, and I caught we both caught it, um, but it was just like this action hero with, Eugene Levy driving around in a Nissan Z and then at the end when the movie like premieres, he hops into a Nissan Aria and yeah. it like quickly shows the back of it, but almost right. no one noticed. Yeah, I it was funny. I was watching all these commercials immediately when a new commercial would come on, I'd go, Oh, is this an EV? Is this is this an electric car? Yeah. So I'm watching it and this entire time it's this it's this gas car making gas car sounds oh, yeah, yeah. and it's a Nissan commercial. So I'm like, Oh, it's not the E V. Mm -hmm. So I just sort of tune out for a second because I'm just watching this yellow Nissan sports car drive around. And then at the very end yeah, they, they bring in the Aria and, and they show away. the badge of the Aria. So mm -hmm. you're like, oh, that's the electric one. And then the commercial ends. So I guess I count that. I count they it. mentioned it. It's not a good one. It's not. No so, one looked up the Aria afterwards. I think that's true. Yeah. I think that's true. So I also want to throw in just a, a quick bonus one, mm -hmm. an extra one. It, it wasn't technically for an EV, but it was electric car related. It was for the Wallbox EV charger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a, like a garage charger for electric cars. It got a Super Bowl ad. That's I was kind of surprised crazy. that this, you know, I've never heard of this company, but they've made this electric car charging box that you put in your garage. And there's lots of other companies that make these too. Yeah. Um, but they had a Super Bowl ad. So that's I, pretty sick, sick. I think what's crazy about that is like, we knew we were going to get EV commercials and we know that means it's like a step towards being more in the mainstream, but getting... EV accessory commercials at that. I feel like we took two steps yeah. more towards it being mainstream and people wondering about it. Hey, thanks for watching this clip on the Waveform channel. Hey, I'm gonna use the outro, which is exactly 15 seconds right now, to make, uh, I'm gonna use the Super Bowl length of time to make mm. the best possible outro, and we'll see if it could be a Super Bowl ad. Ready? All right, ready? Hit go. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the Clips channel, and also because it is a little bit ahead of the regular Waveform channel, make sure you also subscribe to the Waveform channel because it's a little bit lower and has to catch up. Make sure you subscribe to the Shorts channel, which is brand new, and subscribe to the Studio channel, which is right next to the main channel. All of them are on the Shorts channel, uh, other channels page. Hey, that is it. That'll be $8 million. Was that $8 million of value? I feel like I did a pretty good job there. All right. Yeah. Cool.